mothers and sisters. On this, the most holy of days, we celebrate the Passover of the Lord, in which through word and sacrament, we share in Christ's victory over death. Christ, who once was dead, lives now forever. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him. And all ages to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. Amen. Eternal God, who raised Jesus from the dead and made the universe to shine with the brightness of your one true light, set us now aflame with the fire of your love and bring us to the radiance of your heavenly glory through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. Amen. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, 
for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen as God's witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, and everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory be to God on high and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we give glory to thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of thy Son hast overcome the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to thee in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and for all eternity. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb, and saw and so she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the risen Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. On the 3rd of April, the Daily Telegraph headlined an article 
with the words, religious leaders confess they are struggling to answer the question, why is God letting this happen? In a Zoom-hosted chat between Christian and Jewish faith leaders, the leaders praise technology for allowing people to remain connected during the current COVID-19 pandemic and discussed a range of philosophical and religious dilemmas. For some weeks now, all religious buildings in the United Kingdom have been ordered to close their doors under government guidelines. And so much of the celebration of Passover and Easter will have to take place online. As the conversation between Cardinal Nichols, Archbishop Welby and Chief Rabbi Mervis continued, it was Cardinal Nichols who revealed something of the toll that the pandemic was taking on religious leaders, saying that he was struggling to answer questions about the role of God in times of crisis. I do, I must admit, he said, sometimes struggle with people's question of where is God in all of this? Why is God letting this happen? That twin question of where is God in all of this? Why is God letting this happen? is often on people's lips. Where was God at Auschwitz? Or in the Coptic church bombed in Alexandria on Palm Sunday a few years ago? Where was God when Syrian women and children were being gassed in Idlib? Or the Tutsi being slaughtered in Rwanda? Where is God in the lives of an almost endless list of families and towns and villages and nations and continents when horrible things happen and are witnessed. On Good Friday, Jesus hangs upon the cross of Calvary and God in Christ, on behalf of mankind, on behalf of all that is, utters to God his and our echoing, achingly, despairing and questioning cry, where are you, God, in all of this? So where is God in this? Where is God in the COVID-19 pandemic? Where is God in the genocides and torture and disease and pain of our world. What, if anything, can the journey from the cross erected on Golgotha on Good Friday to the empty tomb of today tell us about where God is? What Mary Magdalene and the other disciples who had almost without exception abandoned their friend and teacher came to discover through three awful agonizing days was this. Even when evil and darkness and death seem to triumph, God is revealed not as an absent onlooker, but as the unceasingly abiding presence which holds everything that is in being. That God is not an external, impotent onlooker, but is in each and every situation of awfulness and despair with us especially when those moments are at their darkest and when everything seems to be lost. Mary Magdalene and the other disciples discover on that first Easter day, the first day of God's new creation, that the God of Abraham, 
Isaac and Jacob does not retreat to the safety of the sidelines, looking on unmoved like some disinterested spectator, but that God is intimately, inextricably present in every moment, that God is alongside his people whenever and wherever even the most unimaginable, wicked and perverse, life-denying things are perpetrated. Christians down through the centuries, from the moment when the tomb that had held Jesus' lifeless body was found to be empty, have come to understand that even in, perhaps most especially in, the times of deepest darkness, unimaginable despair and searing pain, God does not abandon his people, but is there with and alongside his people. That the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, who through the incarnation of his eternal word became man, is always and forever, everywhere, throughout his creation, the God who is Emmanuel, the God who is with us, the God who is not immune from the suffering of creation, the God who bears our suffering within himself, where alone it can find meaning and resolution, wholeness and healing. Christians down through the centuries have come to believe, along with Mary Magdalene and Peter and John, that even the darkest horror, the deepest despair, the most life-changing situation can be opened to God's redeeming, reconciling and recreative love. Because of the three days spanning Good Friday and Easter, that the boundless activity of God sets no limits on its own transformative self-giving. God does not coerce or pre-plan or predetermine his creation, but creation is therefore and always will be laden with the inherent risk of what it means to be free to have free will, to go its own way, however painful the results. Some years ago now, the Christian priest and writer W. H. Vanston wrote this. If creation is the work of love, its security lies not in its conformity to some predetermined plan, but in the unsparing love which will not abandon a single fragment of it. And man's assurance must be the assurance not that all that happens is determined by God's plan, but rather that all that happens is encompassed by God's love. Easter Day is the eternal proof, revealed in time and place, that all things, everything, and everyone are embraced by God's love. That despair can, through God, be transformed into hope. That darkness can become light. That sorrow can be transfigured into joy. That death because of today and Christ's victory, will always give way to new and eternal life. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! In 
baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Praise God who made heaven and earth, who keeps his promises forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you gave us grace through sacramental signs, which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breathed on the waters, making them the wellspring of holiness. The waters of the great flood, you made a sign of the waters of baptism, that make an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people, set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptised by John and anointed with the Spirit. Your son willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. After his resurrection, he told his disciples, go out and teach all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father, look now with love upon your church and unseal for her the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Spirit, give to the water of this vault the grace of your Son. You created mankind in your own likeness. Cleanse him from sin in a new birth of innocence by water and the Spirit. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon the waters of this font. May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism also with him rise to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Give him glory and praise forever. I invite you now to affirm your faith as we say. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, we thank thee for our fellowship in the household of faith with all who have been baptised in thy name. Keep us faithful to our baptism, and so make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, 
Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord. Chiefly are we bound to praise thee, because thou didst raise him gloriously from the dead. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us, and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of thy divine majesty, renew us by thy Holy Spirit, inspire us with thy love, and unite us in the body of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him and by him and through him we plead his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross. Send your Holy Spirit now upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that we may be his living, risen body and blood in the world. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of our, the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen.
pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! Let us pray. God of life, who for our redemption didst give thine only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection hast delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily unto sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this Easter time and always. Amen. Alleluia. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. We have received the light of Christ. Let us walk in this light all the days of our life. With the risen life of Christ within us, let us go in the light and the peace of Christ. Alleluia! Alleluia! Thanks be to God. Alleluia! <laughs> 